Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to answer another subscriber's question. Today we're gonna to answer Alan 713's question, which is, do you think the same principles could be applied in other industries, for example, in tech or data science? Like I'm also interested in research, would that be tolerated in tech data science SC? This is on a video here, I'll link it above, maybe below as well on quant culture here. So I think banks do an absolute terrible train wreck of a job for the most part. There are exceptions to this. There are a few banks out there that are doing much better at this, but they don't really cater to quants. They don't really understand how to use the quants full power and capacity to benefit the business here. And so instead we end up creating these nonsensical business hierarchies with a lot of business people where you end up taking quants, they get kind of good at their job. And then by the time they're kind of getting good, you throw them into management and you take them out of actually adding value to the business. And there's just not a lot of focus on the quant research, the quant mentality, building teams, acceptance of quants, which is far from the truth in the actual banking side. And so that's what the original quant culture video is about and how do we improve this? And it's really challenging to bring in academics resources and to bring in other sorts of benefits thing to help support quants in their growth. Now, I think tech has done a 10 times better job at this. Uh, data science, I cannot, I don't know, think about per se, because I don't think it's really a separate field. Typically, you have data scientists in tech, you have data scientists in banks, you have data scientists in DeFi and other areas. So I'm not gonna split that one off, but I think tech has done a much, much better job on this. And so an example on the tech side here, I know a lot of tech sides or tech firms specifically have a two-tiered system here. So a normal bank, for example, or a firm typically has this one giant hierarchy. And then you have quants, and then you have like accounting and finance and you know decision sciences, and you have these different siloed bins. And so everybody has their own track and you typically go from an individual contributor and you work your way through that. Then once you become so high, you become a manager and you just do managerial work and there's not a lot of resources for you. Now tech on the other hand, typically has a lot of the firms at least have a two track system where you can work and there's a point where you can decide you wanna stay an individual contributor and continue going up the individual contributor ladder and still make a lot of really good money. But again, you're gonna be adding a lot more value as an individual contributor because you're finally an expert after you've been in this you know, industry for 10, 15, 20 years. Or do you wanna to switch to a management track and you still focus on managing technical people, but you need a technical background to understand how to manage them, which is much, much better than what's happening in finance. We can bring in you know, MBA person XYZ who has minimal understanding of quant knowledge and you bring them in to manage it. Uh, instead, now you're having a technical person who wants to do management, who wants to work with people, who wants to train them and educate them and support them and be a good mentor. And you're moving them into a management track that works alongside this. And often there are managers who make far less than the individual contributors solely based on the fact that it's based on skill and value added to the business here. So I think tech has done an amazing job on this. I think they've done stellar. Now my gripe and complaint with tech and the things that worry me about tech is they don't understand quants. It's just not there, guys. There's, <laughs> there's not really that many quants per se in tech. And what I mean by this is like, you talk to these firms and they're really jazzed, they're really excited. They're gonna have people building stats models. They're gonna have people building machine learning models, for example. And so you're like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm listening, right? I'm really excited for this. And you think about it and then you're talking to the recruiters and it's like the amount of stats these people know seem to be really just low level dumb stuff. And they're not really rigorously applying this. And this is one of the advantages I pointed out with banking is the amount of regulation is ridiculous, but that amount of regulation requires, or at least it attempts to require, because a lot of banks don't do this, but it attempts to require really, really high standards academically on a rigorous level here. So you need to meet academic standards. You need to understand what's going on behind your models. You need expertise in all these things. The tech side on the flip side is very fun and loose and it's exploratory. You can come with all kinds of awesome solutions but I think there's a lack of deep understanding on the stats side and the math side when it comes into these, right? A lot of these roles here, so for example, machine learning, data science, they start to really focus on, can you code? Can you really code well? How good are you at coding? Let me give you 15 coding problems. Let's have coding interviews. It's all about coding. And you're not really a software engineer, you're a machine learning engineer. And they get really excited about it. And it's like, okay, I, I get it, I get it, I get it. You need to be really good at coding because quants spend 60, 70% of their time coding as well. So I understand the coding piece, but what about the stats piece? What about the math piece? What about the theory piece? Do you have that? And it's like, I, I mean, tell me what type of algorithms you've used. It's just like, 
One, can we stop calling them algorithms? Can we start calling them models? Because most of these things aren't algorithms. They're actually models with theory behind them, which is why it's a model. And yes, machine learning has theory behind it. We're just ignoring it and pretending it's pie in the sky. And this is kind of my issue with tech is like, I really like the freedom. I really like the culture. I really like, a lot of them have good work-life balance, for example. They have remote working, which finance is kicking and screaming and not wanting to do. So tech has this amazing quant culture in many ways. It understands nerds. It understands computer scientists. You know, it understands mathematicians. There. They understand what we need to grow and thrive and be a part of a booming company in an industry that is driven off of scientific endeavor. They get it. They understand it. They're doing amazing. But they seem to really lack the rigor piece. And that's what really concerns me on the tech side is they're just, they're just seems to be throwing mud on the wall and hoping something sticks. When I read a lot of these books from people that are actually doing this, uh, that's kind of the approach they take. They say, well, I tried this model. I tried, well, I tried this algorithm. I tried this other algorithm. I tried this. I tried this one fit the best and it was robust because of these reasons and they throw out a few things. So quant wise, culture wise, I think tech's doing an all-star job. Uh, rigorously, analytically, I worry a lot about tech. Uh, the more people I talk to in tech, the more I start panicking a little bit on like, this seems like everyone knows right now I'm not working, I'm unemployed, right? They know I'm looking if I want to go into tech or banking or, you know, fintech or DeFi or I don't know, something else completely different. But part of my concern with this entire thing is that I don't think tech has the academic rigor. They're amazing software engineers. They're amazing at building products people like, like Facebook and Instagram and, you know, LinkedIn. And I don't know, I'm not always TikTok and all kinds of social media platforms or tech things. I feel like an old man here. But, you know, they've done great at building products. They've done great at taking lots and lots of data from people. But there are privacy concerns and issues with this. There are ethical concerns I worry about. And there are the academic rigorous sides I worry about. So those are my takeaways. Those are my thoughts on tech, on quant culture. They have really good quant culture for the most part. But there seems to be a little bit of an academic hiccup here. I understand the trade-off though. They're wanting to be flexible, exploratory, cutting edge. But to do that, you really need to bring in the rigor. And I think they need to up their rigor in many of these areas. And that's kind of my concern with that. Again, on a quant culture perspective, but also on a job and a working perspective. So anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time. <laughs>